Um, I'm Susan Buckbinder. I am the director of the HIV research section and the lead scientific advisor for the SOAR project. And on behalf of the entire project and the entire team, which is large, um, I want to welcome you all to our groundbreaking ceremony and just give you a little bit of background on the AIDS office itself and on the reason for the SOAR project. So the AIDS office is really a unique research institution. It, we, in addition to the care that's provided and the resources that are given to the community to care for, to prevent and care for people with HIV infection, we really are the only uh, um, health department that is leading the HIV prevention and surveillance effort. Um, the kind of research that we do is done primarily through universities, so we're in a unique position. We have uh, three research organizations housed within the AIDS office. There's the HIV Epidemiology Unit that's headed by Dr. Susan Shear and Willie McFarland, and they really are the premier surveillance group for HIV and AIDS in the country that train many other groups globally about how to track HIV infections and uh, HIV-related disease so that we can know how best to target our prevention efforts and our treatment efforts. And so they've really done a huge um, service to the, in, the global HIV AIDS community and also in addressing health disparities. The HIV prevention units headed by Dr. Grant Colfax, and they also are really a groundbreaking research organization as well as uh, providing prevention services and leading the prevention efforts in the city, they have really spearheaded this effort at looking, how, looking at how treatment can affect prevention, how if you get people tested and treated more globally, you can really drive down HIV infection. And so through Dr. Mobley Doss, they've uh, pioneered this work on community viral load. They've pioneered a lot of work on HIV testing, in treatment of uh, substance use, and a variety of other topics. And then I had the HIV research section, and we have a number of talented folks um, who work with me, who, and we're testing a number of different kinds of prevention interventions, including HIV vaccines, uh, Pre-exposure prophylaxis, which is using HIV medication to prevent new infections, reaching out to the African American community to understand what's driving the epidemic, particularly in that community, and using peer health navigation to connect them with services, rectal microbicides, combination prevention interventions, and so forth. And in the last year, we've had a couple of major breakthroughs in both a new HIV vaccine that seems to be providing partial protection, and we're starting to understand how that may be working, as well as in using antiretrovirals to prevent new infections. So the entire AIDS office has come together to work collaboratively to address the epidemic. Now, we were challenged in that we're, we are based in a health department, and so we don't have the resources to build uh, buildings and to renovate buildings uh, because we're largely grant funded. And one of our employees, Janie Vinson, saw a um, <laughs> saw that there were federal stimulus funds that we could apply for to renovate our building. And we had three needs. We needed to be able to work together more collaboratively. Teams were split up on different floors and different units, and there wasn't good meeting space to work cross teams. We needed more clinical space to see our study volunteers. And we needed more community space so that we could bring community into what we do, because community is an integral part of what we do. And so under Barbara Garcia's leadership, we uh, came together and put in this SOAR grant and it's the first time that the federal government, that NIH, has awarded this kind of money to a health department. They've only awarded this kind of research money to universities. And so it's really through the joint efforts under Barbara's leadership that we've been able to move forward. And it's really through the support of the city government, through the mayor, through our supervisors, through the health commission, that we've really um, moved this field forward. So with, without further ado, I want to uh, introduce the Honorable Mayor Edwin Lee. Thank you. Uh, thank you everybody for coming this morning and Dr. Buckbinder and Barbara and the commissioners, congratulations. Uh, these days, it is so difficult to land federal grants, no matter where they're from. And it only takes the dedication that 
Uh, you've identified the people who worked on this very hard to put together a grant specific to modernize our AIDS research office, and it's absolutely needed. Uh, I remember in the uh, early 1980s where uh, we joined the three major cities of the country, uh, in uh, this city, in New York, and Los Angeles, where the initial AIDS research got started, and we were concentrated in our areas, but we understood that this epidemic had to be studied even further to make sure that we were on the right track to discover not only breakthroughs, but prevention ideas that would be really directed at uh, curtailing this epidemic. And so uh, you fast forward uh, the 25, 30 years since that time, and we need more of that research done. And so I am glad that this uh, money was identified. Uh, it's it's going to be very helpful, this nine and a half a million dollars of uh, aid from the National Institute of Health. Uh, and again, I emphasize that this is almost miraculous because you don't see these grants very often uh, to public agencies unless we are doing the absolutely necessary thing. And that is focused on uh, improving and making sure we make great breakthroughs. And we are going to be able to do that with this additional uh, space. Uh, this money will go towards uh, additional 8,000 square feet on top of renovating another 9,000. So it's a total uh, focused on the 17,000 square feet of space that is in different floors of this building, making sure they're connected up and that we have additional physician space, uh, counseling offices, and examination rooms, as well as research space. That's invaluable. Uh, I want to put on my little DPW hat for a moment as well, because uh, DPH uh, obviously doesn't work in a vacuum. They work, when they identify this, they work with everybody. And I want to uh, thank uh, Supervisor uh, Wiener for coming here today, too, because he knows how important it is for that collaboration to occur. And so uh, DPH working in this facility, and by the way, I need you to know that probably the last time I was standing here was having barbecue when it was the... <laughs> Well, it was a barbecue uh, restaurant here, and I was at the top floor at the, at the uh, uh, rooftop hall heading up the Human Rights Commission, and we were already working in concert with uh, the AIDS office to prevent discrimination with people with AIDS. And I recall those days when we had those uh, commission meetings when we were just starting out, and it was so important to make sure people weren't discriminated against as they try to survive and find help in this uh, wonderful city that we have. Well, again, uh, Public Works, uh, uh, you're amazing. You're working with our real estate department in finding ways to make sure we have the best approach to this. And we are also working with our uh, private contractors. I know Turner Construction is doing the uh, construction management here and working very closely with our Bureau of Architecture and Engineering to make sure this is done on time and within budget. That's the mantra of using federal funds these days. We better be on time, better be on budget. And we also better make sure that when we do this, we reach out to our local vendors and make sure they're participating in this economic uh, uh, times. They're very struggling. And we already have a 25% goal to do this correctly. So this renovation is important for all of those different levels. But the most important thing is that we have more modern offices for our AIDS uh, ed epidemic research, because I know I know that in our lifetimes, Barbara, we're going to find some fantastic breakthroughs with your leadership, with the leadership of the commission, and with the wonderful staff that you have that is focused on ending this epidemic and making sure people not only get the resources that they have, but that they also know that this is a city of hope, that we're going to continue doing what is necessary to make sure that we end this epidemic and to provide cures for people around the world. It isn't just for San Francisco any longer. We know that disease knows no boundaries. And so uh, the discoveries that we have, uh, that we will make here, uh, the prevention ideas that will uh, educate more and more people about safe practices, uh, uh, safe lifestyles, and the discoveries that we have in uh, finding the appropriate drugs will happen uh, as a result of this effort here. And so I want to thank everybody uh, for working together. And I want to thank Mark Primo as well and his private consulting uh, uh, capacity that he's been able to uh, take a look at the physical things that we can do to ensure that the research goes on. And I want to uh, celebrate this day and uh, get ready to knock down these walls and make sure that we provide the space that we have. So thank you very much for being here.
I'd let, next like to uh, introduce Rep um, Supervisor Scott Weiner. Thank you, thank you, and uh, I want to thank both of my constituents, Dr. Bookbinder and uh, Mayor Lee, uh, for their for their words. Um, I have the uh, honor of representing the Castro, among other neighborhoods, at the Board of Supervisors. And uh, as you all know, the Castro is, uh, you know, arguably the hardest hit neighborhood uh, in the country uh, in terms of this uh, epidemic. And so I feel a special responsibility. Uh, to, uh, to always be there uh, and making sure that our city does what it needs to do uh, to beat uh, this disease. And, um, you know, I know that uh, our Department of Health has done such a, a tremendous job in terms of the services that it provides uh, to our city, to our community, to make sure that people um, have access to prevention resources, to treatment resources, and I know that we'll always be there. And uh, this project is going to just increase the effectiveness of our city government in terms of con consolidating services, having people together, and being able to work collaboratively, and so I'm really excited about that. Um, but it also, uh, in addition to all the great work that uh, uh, the Office of AIDS and DPH do in San Francisco, it's a reminder of the world, the international leadership role uh, that this department uh, plays in terms of fighting uh, HIV AIDS. And I was reminded of this a few weeks ago when uh, I was uh, sponsoring uh, a grant acceptance uh, for the department for some uh, international uh, work. And I got a call from a reporter about why, why are you sponsoring, you know, something relating to Kazakhstan? And uh, it was actually a great opportunity because we got to educate this reporter um, about uh, what this department does and how this is an international epidemic and how people around the world look to San Francisco for leadership and expertise in fighting HIV AIDS. And the reporter said to me afterwards, wow, I had no idea um, how much brilliance is in this department. So this is an exciting project and I just want to congratulate everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Wiener, for your ongoing support. And I'm next going to introduce our Director of Public Health, Barbara Garcia. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am so honored, and I'm very so proud of the department's staff. Um, you know, I get a lot of travel requests, and it's to Peru and to Mozambique and Tanzania. <laughs> and, and then at the bottom, it says how much it costs, and it's usually zero. And those are the ones I like to sign. <laughs> And, but it really does, and I do want to just acknowledge the DPH AIDS office staff. Please raise all your hands because you clearly, <laughs> some of you have, you know, in culmination of years, I know you've probably been, there's hundreds of years of experience here, and um, I know that that is so, so important. And we've done some incredible work in San Francisco, and you've taken your work and your understanding of this disease to other parts of the country, of the world, and it makes such a big difference um, for everyone uh, in the world around, particularly around ending this disease. But, um, you know, you're doing AIDS planning, and then my job as a principal investigator is to help with space planning. And um, this is a hundred-year-old building, and we were in all kinds of different different spaces and so I do want to acknowledge some of the staff that just really helped and then try to figure out how we move people to be able to then uh, construct behind them. So Mark Primo clearly has been my liaison to the staff. I want to acknowledge Martin Soto who has, raise your hand Martin, um, he's been um, my negotiator whenever people are trying to figure out what the next space uh, process is going to be. I also would like to recognize the Department of Public Works. I believe we do have a Fahad, um, a representative. <laughs> the Real Estate Division, John Updike. Uh, the 25 Van Ness Real Estate Team, Leslie Giovanni Lee, Ger Gerald Sui, and John Updike, I said, other people from that. Um, one of the things that we're looking at is how to bring this to the 21st century and technology. Um, we're also, you know, we have, we're going to have a large conference room for, I believe it's going to fit about 150 people. Um, and that will be able to bring community people in, but it's also going to be an advantageous one for us. We're talking about maybe some telemedicine, so maybe we can be speaking to other parts of the, of the world in terms of um, our work. Uh, so Department of Technology, do we have any representatives? All right, great. <laughs> And um, our own San Francisco Department of Information Technology Unit. Do we have our staff here from? 
okay? And Turner Construction, what we could we do without a construction company? So. <laughs> Um, again, I wanted to thank all our staff, but also um, it's really important to acknowledge the role of our commission who continue to support our efforts in this uh, effort, um, and I wanted to introduce Steve Tierney. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, and I just want to um, take a second to congratulate everyone. Um, I had the pleasure to work in this 100-year-old building for a while, and with the men and women that just raised their hand. And the exciting thing about San Francisco was when the CDC and HRSA said, we want to cut new HIV uh, infections by 10%, San Francisco said no, 50%. And when they said, we'd like to get folks uh, in line with uh, undetectable viral load, um, Susan and the rest of the team said, no, that won't do. We need to get everybody in undetectable viral load. And then they said, great, if we do that, we can cut down on some care dollars. And we said, nope. Um, folks, who are <laughs> folks who are living with HIV in San Francisco across each community um, will receive the highest quality care possible. Um, and that commitment is demonstrated um, again, over and over again. And the awarding of this grant um, and the mayor coming to, uh, uh, to tell us that he supports um, these efforts in the strongest possible way and will over the next administration um, is just news that's um, important for everybody in the community. Um, so we're um, proud to be here, and I can't wait to see who hits that wall with that hammer um, <laughs> and begins the good work. Congratulations, everyone. So I think with that, we're actually going to begin our groundbreaking, and I think um, our mayor has the first has the opportunity for the first swing. Are we ready? Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> 